844-374-5433, but you knew that. 844-374-5433, give me a call, and I will give you advice on what to do to support and promote your body's ability to optimize its structure and function to attempt to cure your illness. Whether it's an acute disease or a chronic disease, I will give you my opinion on what you can do right now today with science-based, clinically verified alternatives to the insanity brought to the medical marketplace by the men and the women's in the white coats, the MDs, the owners of the domain of medicine for the last 100 years under whose guidance we are getting sicker and sicker and poorer and poorer. The leading cause of death in the United States, MD-directed medical treatments, the leading cause of bankruptcy, MD-directed medical treatments, and wouldn't you know it, they are up to it again. U.S. regulators have been given a green light to deliver and uh, deliver. The first and the only drug that can treat the overdose of chemotherapy or severe allergic reactions to chemotherapy. The approval was based on clinical data that showed the overall survival rate of patients with 5-FU toxicity who received a single dose of Vistogard was 96%. Vistogard, marketed by Wellstat Therapeutics Corporation based in Gaithersburg, Maryland, is taken orally and can block cell damage and cell death caused by 5-FU toxicity. This from UncoverCalifornia.com. UncoverCalifornia.com. And this begs the question, of course, well, what the heck are oncologists giving overdoses of the drug for in the first place? Who's controlling them and why are they doing it and why aren't the doctors held accountable? I mean, it's the doctor that's overdosing the drug. It's the doctor that's prescribing the drug. Somebody is it. The patient's not doing it. So why aren't there consequences for the physicians that prescribe an overdose? Oh, no, we have to give the medical doctors a pass. It's all a work in progress, right? It's the practice of medicine. And, of course, this begs the question, why on earth are we still using chemotherapy when... The Journal of Clinical Oncology, Volume 16, Issue 8, December 2004. Let me say that again. The Journal of Clinical Oncology, um, by the way, which is the gold standard of cancer research publications in the world. The Journal of Clinical Oncology, Volume 16, Issue 8, December 2004, pages 549 to 560. They did a meta-analysis. They collected 14 years of data of adults who had developed cancer between 1990 and 2004. 14-year analysis, a meta-analysis of data from all around the world, adults who had developed cancer. This was a gigantic study published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology 11 years ago this month, 11 years ago this month. The results, are you ready? 97% of the time, 97% of the time, chemotherapy for adult onset cancer does not work. That's 97% of the time, chemotherapy does not work. Now, in a study this large, there's a 3% error ratio, which is, you know, that it's it's an error ratio that's built into a statistical analysis just because that's the way you do it. Studies have faults, right? Nothing's perfect. So a study this big, there's a 3% error ratio, which is pretty good, which means that between 94 and 100% of the time, chemotherapy doesn't work. Doesn't work. So why are they still rolling it out? Why are they still rolling it out aggressively? Why are they still rolling chemotherapy out aggressively? I'll tell you why. Because it is a gigantic money maker. It's a gigantic money maker. Chemotherapeutic drugs, by the way, are the only drugs that bypassed the pharmacist, right? So when a medical doctor prescribes a heartburn medicine or a blood pressure medicine or a blood sugar medicine, you don't get it from the doctor. You get it from the pharmacist, and you pay the pharmacist price, whatever that is. The doctor's cut out of the money stream there, but not with chemotherapy. You can't get chemotherapeutic drugs over, you know, at CVS. 
You can't get them at the pharmacy. The only person that can order them is the oncologist. So the oncologist orders them and buys them. The hospital orders them and buys them at the wholesale price, marks it up a remarkable amount, charges your insurance. The insurance pays, you know, 80% of it, and the oncologist and the hospital split the profits. It is a gigantic money-making machine for oncologists and for hospitals, and that is why they still do it. And if you're not paying it, if you're not angry, you are simply not paying attention. By the way, let's take a look at survival rates. Let's take a look at survival rates. Pancreatic cancer survival rate after one year of conventional treatment, after one year of conventional treatment, 86% of pancreatic cancer patients will be dead. After five years, 98% of pancreatic cancer treatments will be dead. The survival rate for pancreatic cancer is abysmal. It is abysmal. And yet, we still roll out chemotherapy for it all of the time, even though it does not work. Ovarian cancer survival rates. Ovarian cancer survival rates. After three years of treatment, after three years of conventional treatment, radiation, chemo, and surgery, 55%, 55% of ovarian cancer patients will be dead. And after five years of conventional treatment, 71% of ovarian cancer patients will be dead. And it doesn't get better in years six, seven, eight, or nine. Ovarian cancer treatment does not work. Kidney cancer. Let's take a look at kidney cancer. After two years of conventional treatment with radiation, chemo, and surgery, 80, 78, 78% of kidney cancer patients will be dead. 78% of kidney cancer patients will be dead. And after five years, 90% of kidney cancer patients will be dead. 90% of kidney cancer patients will be dead. Breast cancer. After two years of conventional cancer treatment, 50% of breast cancer patients will be dead. 50% of breast cancer patients will be dead. And after five years, 77% of breast cancer patients will be dead. This is after they've hacked off the breasts. This is after they've polluted their bodies with chemotherapy and radiation and followed the advice of the MDs and who gets better. The medical doctor gets better because the medical doctor makes money. The cancer patient does not get better. Last but not least, we're going to look at today colon cancer survival rates. After two years, 62%, 62% of colon cancer patients under the treatment of the MD oncologist will be dead. And after five years, 90% of colon cancer patients will be dead. This, of course, after the oncologists have bilked the patient for tens of thousands of dollars, put tens of thousands of dollars into their pocketbooks, giving the patients false hope and getting enrolling the patients into the treatment based out of fear. You are insane. You're crazy if you don't get on board with this treatment, even though it clearly does not work. In my book, The MD Emperor Has No Clothes, I have a chapter on cancer, and there are 10 questions in my book that every cancer patient needs to ask their oncologist in the presence of a witness and a recording device. 10 questions that every cancer patient needs to ask their oncologist in the presence of a witness and a recording device. You can get my book for $9, I think, and 99 cents at, you know, Amazon, <coughs> the ebook. You want to buy a softback copy of it, it's 20 bucks. You can check all of this out at my website, glidden.healthcare. That's glidden, like the paint, no relation, glidden.healthcare. I'll give you the first two questions for free, the first two questions in my book. Doctor, you want to set the stage, right? You want to be polite to the oncologist. Say, Doc, I know that, you know, delivery of medicine in the United States is a for-profit business, and I know that different... Hospitals, different clinics have different outcomes. So I'm shopping for the best cancer treatment that is possible for me right now in the 21st century. So in order for me to 
figure out what to do next, I would appreciate it if you could indulge me by answering a few questions that I have. Thank you very much for your time. Question number one, do your treatments cure my cancer? Do your treatments cure my cancer? That's a pretty good question. Question number two, if your treatments don't cure my cancer, what can I expect from the treatments? Question number three, all right, I'll give you more. Question number three, what side effects will your treatments engender? How are you going to treat the side effects? I would like to talk to 10 patients my age who have been treated by you for this type of cancer and see what their experience was like. How much money do you profit from these treatments? How much money does the hospital profit from these treatments? And if you can't cure the cancer, then why are you even attempting to treat it in the first place? What's going on here? What's the deal? If people simply ask these questions to their oncologist, very few people would line up for expensive, ineffective treatments that actually cause cancer, alter people's personalities, and completely ruin the last years of their life. People would not do this, but nobody asks these questions because everybody is bullied into treatment by the MDs. They're bullied into treatment by the MDs. The numbers are in, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't matter whether you believe in uh, holistic medicine or not. It doesn't matter if you know how to spell vitamin or not. It doesn't matter if you know the first, second, or third things about statistical analyses it doesn't matter if you know anything about pathophysiology. It doesn't even matter if you don't know how to spell vitamin. The facts are the facts. You're welcome to your own opinion, but not to your own set of facts. We have lost the war on cancer. And while we have given ourselves over to the oncologists, we're getting worse and worse, and they are getting richer. It's time we snapped out of it and attempted a cure. Stick around. Much more to come. Dr. Peter Glidden here. Thanks so much for clicking on the link. I appreciate your trust and your curiosity. Last year in the United States, we spent over $30 billion on nutritional supplements, and everybody's still sick. When it comes to nutritional supplements, the recipe is everything. All wine is made from grapes. There's a great deal of difference from bottle to bottle, depending on too many variables to count. It's the same with nutritional supplements. If you need to spend hard-earned money on nutritional supplements, which you do because medical insurance doesn't pay for it, did you ever wonder why? Well, that's the subject for an entirely different conversation. But in point of fact, our position is, in order for the body to work the way that God and nature intended it, there are 90 essential nutrients that need to be imported into it on a daily basis. These 90 essential nutrients are not all present in the food supply. You must supplement. It's mandatory. You must give your body the raw materials it needs every day to optimize its structure and function. You must give your body a fighting chance. So you need nutritional supplements. Well, which nutritional supplements should you take? That's the million dollar question. I've been doing naturopathic medicine, practicing naturopathic medical therapeutics in clinical settings for over a quarter of a century now. And as God is my witness, I am here to tell you that the nutritional supplements which produce the most consistent effective results are those developed and delivered by Longevity. If you have finally snapped out of it and seen the light, if you are finally convinced that medical nutrition is what your body has been missing your entire life, and if you're ready to take a walk through the undiscovered country of science-based, clinically verified medical nutrition, then you need to try Longevity's nutritional supplements because they produce the most consistent results of anything I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot in over a quarter of a century primary care naturopathic medicine. Fill out the form on this page, ladies and gentlemen. Click the submit button and a longevity representative whom I know and trust will be in touch with you to show you what to do to support and promote your body's ability to optimize its structure and function. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your trust. I am your steadfast advocate for health, Dr. Peter Glidden. Live long and prosper. I'll see you around campus. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. 
Dr. Peter Glidden, your steadfast advocate for health, 844-374-5433. That's the number to call, like Taylor in Oklahoma did. Hey, Taylor, thanks for the phone call. You are live. Hi, Peter. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? Fine, thank you, but God willing, I'll get better. How can I help? Um, well, I've got a boatload. I've got um, tinnitus. I've got um, ADHD and eczema. I was just wondering what I could take for that. Okay, what I was the first thing tinnitus. besides the ADHD and eczema? Tinnitus. Tinnitus, okay. So that's ringing in the ears for the listening audience. Tinnitus, tinnitus, tomato, tomato. It's the same stuff. So from our point of view, there are many things that can cause this. But, you know, there's a saying in medicine, right? When you hear hoofbeats, you think about uh, horses before you think about, uh, you know, uh, zebras or wildebeest, right? Yeah. Uh, unless, of course, you live in Africa. So the most common thing that causes ringing in the ears is osteoporosis of the skull. It's arthritis in the skull. It's your skull bone has lost structural integrity. And so the nerve that comes off of the brain that goes to your eardrum is has been compromised as it goes through the tunnel in the skull. Um, so we would advise taking calcium, extra calcium in yeah. bone support, and I'll tell you how to do that in a minute. Eczema, okay. the first, second, and third things to think about with eczema are uh, not enough essential fatty acids, not enough essential fatty acids, and too much consumption of wheat, wheat, whole wheat, wheat in any form, and that includes wheat grass. When we're talking about ADD, this is a mineral deficiency in addition to uh, blood sugar imbalance. Mineral deficiency in addition to a blood sugar imbalance. Those are the first things to think about. So, Taylor, how much do you weigh? 150. 150? Okay. So, first things first, you want to get the list of the 12 bad foods at my website. And you... I already eliminate those. I have for a while. Okay, great. So, are you taking any of the longevity supplements? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Okay, so which ones are you taking and what's happening? I'm taking Cell Shield RTQ. I'm taking extra selenium, extra essential fatty acids, obviously two healthy start packs, herbal rainforest, plant dried minerals, and the glycogels. I've been um, targeting the, the tinnitus because I saw that on your website already. But Okay, so how long, that, have, how long have you been doing this? Um, almost a month now. Okay, and uh, when you've been doing it for the last four weeks... Have you experienced anything that's improved anywhere whatsoever? Well, of course, yeah. Well, just, so um, so tell us about it. So, so all right. So, what what has improved uh, to help the listening audience to understand what your experience has been? So, you've been doing this for four okay. weeks. What got better? Um, my energy. I've lost weight. Um, the the ringing of the ears. The volume has turned down a little bit too. I, you know, I've, I mean, everything's improved. It improves everything. It improves everything. How about the eczema? Uh, I haven't, I haven't really um, targeted that because I'm not sure what to take for that yet. Well, so you're already taking it. So extra essential fatty acids and the glucogel would be okay. what to take. But I have to tell you something that the body has a tendency to fix itself from the inside to the outside and from the top to the bottom. So I would guess that in your circumstance the eczema would be the last thing to get better and eczema above your waist would get better before eczema below your waist would get. So you're doing exactly the right thing, Taylor. There's nothing else for you to add, but you must understand this one thing, that healing, with, uh, healing the body with medical nutrition, which is what we're up to here, is a process. It's not an event. It's something that's going to take time, it's not going to take forever, but it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen in a couple of hours like we're used to when we pop a pharmaceutical agent, right? We have a headache, we take a Tylenol, 15 minutes later it's gone. This is a different situation. This is very much a marathon, not a sprint. So given the fact that you've been doing this for four weeks and you've already experienced a reduction in symptomology in more than one area, well, that means you just have to maintain the discipline Give the program more time. There's nothing extra for you to do except continue to do this stuff every day. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so you just want to, you know, hang in there, baby. And if I were you, I would do a symptom inventory, right? I would write down on a piece of paper everything that bothers me, and I would give each of those symptoms a score. 
you know, from zero to 10. My, the ringing in my ears today was a, a nine out of a 10 or whatever. My eczema was a, a six out of a 10, whatever. And then once a week, okay. you check in with each of those symptoms. And if you keep a running tab on that, you'll be able to see over time, son of a gun, things are getting better. And that will give you inspiration to maintain the discipline. Keep up the good work, Taylor. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Peter Glidden, your steadfast advocate for health. Mark in Virginia is up when we come back. If you are sick and tired of feeling sick and tired, if you are finally finished with expensive and ineffective MD treatments, and if you are frustrated with not knowing which nutritional supplements to take, you have come to exactly the right place. We are here to help. Log into eiffelhealth.com, click the contact button, and someone who has been working with Dr. Glidden will contact you and show you exactly what to do to recover your health. Go to eiffelhealth.com, that's eiffelhealth.com, and click the contact button now. Eight four four three seven four five four three three. Thanks for tuning in and turning on. You know, education really is what we're up to here. And ironically, uh, you know, we've been pitched the false notion that uh, healing is a complicated, sophisticated process that can only take place in multi-million-dollar high-tech facilities. That's nonsense. Surgery is complicated. Healing is easy. So if you're up against a chronic disease, most of the times you don't need to go to the MD. And most of the time, if you do go to the MD, that's a bad decision because their treatments are not designed to get to the root cause of the illness. Their treatments are only designed to manage the symptoms. So it's better for you to attempt to cure it on your own because the MDs are clueless about how to do that. So in 27 years of clinical experience, I've caught a clue, right? I have a notion of what works and what doesn't work, and I have lined that up for you in my online subscription service, The Dr. Glidden Advocate. Go to glidden.healthcare, become a Dr. Glidden Advocate, and avail yourself of online educational information that you can use to your advantage right now to help you try to understand what's going on with your body, and more importantly, what you can do to support your body's built-in, God-given ability to fix itself. Attempt a cure with medical nutrition at Glidden.healthcare. Let's go to Virginia and talk to Mac. Hey, Mark. Thanks for the phone call. You are live. Good morning, Dr. Glidden. How are you today? Good, good, good. How is everything in Virginia? It's doing very nicely. A lot warmer than normal. Yeah, it's a lot warmer uh, than normal here in the Midwest as well. I, I guess it's the El Nino effect. Is that what they're blaming it on? I think it's uh, climate change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know, man, but it, it is a lot warmer um, than it used to be, and and I guess the golfer in me likes that. <laughs> well, there's an upside to everything. <laughs> yeah, you're a glasses half full type of a guy. Hey, thanks for the call, man. How can I help? Reason I'm calling, I've been listening to you for I guess about two months or so now. Okay. And calling about my wife. Uh, she had her gallbladder removed, uh, I'm thinking it was seven or eight years ago. Yeah. And for about that period of time, she was taking prescription Nexium. Yeah. For what was described as reflux. Yeah. And since we've been listening to you, I've been wanting to get her off of the Nexium for some time. So since listening to you, I've been able to do that and convince her of that. And things are getting better, but just a couple other concerns. I wanted to see if we can do something else to help uh, speed up the process or improve the situation. Okay, great. Um, yeah, yeah. So what, what have you had her do for nutritional supplements so far? Well, right now we are on the longevity products. For the first month, we were taking about half the dosage for body weight, um, just of the Healthy Body Start Pack. Yep. And for the last two, maybe three weeks, we're up to full dosages of everything of the Healthy Body Start Pack. In addition, we're taking selenium, and now we're taking enzymes as well as um, root beer belly. Excellent. Wow, man, you're, you're the smartest person in Virginia, man. That is exactly correct. I think I must be doing a good job from a distance here. There's only a couple things you need to understand in order to tweak this a little bit. Um, first of all, right, it's it's just a cry and shame that they yanked the gallbladder. And why do they yank the gallbladder? Because the gallbladder gets funky and the gallbladder tends to get filled with stones, gallstones. Why does the gallbladder get filled with gallstones? Because the bile 
which the gallbladder collects has become funky. Healthy bile will digest the stones that are in the gallbladder. Healthy urine will digest the stones that are in the kidney. Healthy bile digests the stones that are in the gallbladder. The only reason that people get gallstones is because their bile has become funkified. Why does the bile get funkified? Because the body has run out of the nutrients that it needs to make healthy bile and we are consistently unwittingly eating food that's stressing out the liver which makes bile. So, you know, re removing the gallbladder is kind of a silly way to treat this. It's like painting over the mold in the basement. It completely misses what caused the problem to begin with. She didn't have a gallbladder problem because she had a gallbladder, but that's how the MDs think. So, now, so what we need to do, right, is support and promote her liver so that her liver can make healthy bile. And even though she doesn't have a gallbladder anymore, a little bit, a little bit of that bile is still going to get into the digestive tract. And so we support the liver by doing extra selenium. So for four months, I would give her three bottles of selenium a month. How much does she weigh, by the way, Mark? She's right about 180. Yeah, okay, so I'd give her three bottles of selenium a month on you know, top of, in a perfect world, at that body weight. She would be doing two healthy start packs a month, three bottles of selenium a month, two bottles of plant-derived minerals a month, and one or two bottles of the digestive enzymes a month. Um, now, you know, I don't know what your budget is, um, but, but that would be perfect. If, if, if you can't do that, then I would do one healthy body start pack 2.0 liquid, one healthy body start pack 2.0 liquid, three bottles of selenium, one bottle of the plant-derived minerals uh, and the digestive enzymes. Because they yanked the gallbladder, um, she's going to need to be taking the enzymes for the rest of her life. Uh, that will put back into the digestive tract what they took out when they took out the gallbladder. And the secret to the digestive enzymes is you take them at the very beginning of the meal. And if she's eating a meal that has fat in it, you know, like cheese or yogurt or fatty meat or fatty fish or, you know, milk or whatever, um, she should take an extra enzyme, an extra enzyme. And now you'll know she's taking too many enzymes if she gets heartburn. And that will happen about 15, 20 minutes after she takes it, within a half an hour. So if she gets heartburn, well, that was too many enzymes, and she just has to kind of mess around with the dose. I would gainsay that at her weight, she should be able to take one of the enzymes at the beginning of a regular meal and then two of the enzymes at the beginning of a large meal like dinner and or a meal that has a lot of fat in it. Now, in order to have healthy stomach acid, which... I'm assuming she didn't have because they had her on Nexium, right? Because she had heartburn or reflux or whatever they, whatever they called it. We believe, right, that that's caused by a deficiency in stomach acid. And stomach acid deficiencies are caused by not enough salt and not enough calcium. So it might be interesting for two, three, four weeks as a little experiment, in-house experiment, to double or triple the dose of calcium that you're giving her and make sure that she's salting her food so that it tastes good, right? And, you know, when we first start salting our food, we have to overdo it. We have to kind of force the issue. But then the body kind of, you know, gets into it, and you all, all of a sudden your salt tooth will come back, and your body will tell you, oh, you know, I need more salt or whatever. But it might not be a bad idea for the next couple of weeks um, to give her three ounces of the calcium a day, three ounces of the calcium a day, with one of those ounces being immediately before bed. So I would crank it up to three ounces of calcium a day uh, with one of those ounces being immediately before bed. Make sure she's salting her food so that it tastes good. And I would increase the selenium dose. And over time, that plus everything else that you know, you're doing with the diet and the nutritional supplements over time, it should all roll forward and, you know, to her benefit. So, since she's been doing this, Mark, has she experienced anything of, of benefit so far? Well, it is. Uh, she is taking the calcium right before bedtime, and she has started sleeping a lot better. Yeah. Um, but one thing we've noticed with uh, since we've been on the nutrients, um, the heartburn has gotten better, and when it has flared up, she's taken a few drops of peppermint oil and some warm water. Yeah. That seems to knock the fire down, but it does 
come back. In some cases, it can be four or five hours since she's eaten anything, even when she's in a vertical position. There's, you know, the heartburn will break through, but she says that there's always continual upward pressure on the bottom of her throat, like, you know, the heartburns they are trying to push through. Yeah, so that's happening because she was under the influence of the prescription medication for such a long time. And her system got used to that drug, and now it kind of doesn't know what to do. And it's going to take a while for the system to kind of reboot, right? And in order for her stomach and the apparatus down there to start pumping out um, digestive acid the way that nature intended it to. So really, the only thing that you can do here is the same thing that, that Taylor from Oklahoma, the first caller, needs to do. We just need to give the program more time. Now, she may have the unique experience that certain foods at this point in her healing aggravate the heartburn. So every time she gets heartburn now in kind of an exaggerated fashion, she should write down the very last things that she had to eat or drink. And by the third or the fourth time that, you know, she does that, when the heartburn flares up, guaranteed there's going to be stuff on that list that is common. So I would have her eliminate those foods that are on that list that are common um, in order to kind of uh, give her body a little bit of a break here um, moving forward until the whole situation has fixed itself. And, uh, you know, I am the, the, the poster child for calcium deficiencies myself. Uh, my whole life was marked by calcium deficiencies. I didn't know I had calcium deficiencies until I met Dr. Wallach. And heartburn was one of the things that would come and go with me, come and go with me, come and go with me. And I've nipped it, you know, I've, I've eliminated it now completely with the nutritional supplements. But even though, you know, I've been doing this steadfast for six years now. When I eat tomato sauce, I get heartburn, guaranteed. I have tomato sauce, I get heartburn. I think there's a biochemical in tomato sauce, a, 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 a certain way that it's cooked, that mimics um, the uh, digestive acid gastrin. And gastrin is the molecule that opens the valve at the top of the stomach to allow the acid to come back up into the throat. So, right, there are little tricks we can do as we move downstream here to give the stomach a little break while we're waiting for it to cure itself of the heartburn. So I would increase her dose of calcium. I would give her three ounces of calcium a day for a month, see if that accelerates the cure here, and have her just keep an inventory of the food that she eats that presumptively aggravates the um, heartburn, uh, and then she can stay away from those, you know, for the next six months uh, until the body comes back together. But you're doing everything else perfectly correct, perfectly correct. Just make sure she takes the enzymes at the beginning of the meal, and we have to increase the selenium supplementation in order to give the liver some help, in order to give the liver some help. Does that make sense? It does. And I really appreciate the uh, information and the education. It's been, uh, been very interesting. Yeah, it really is interesting. You know, it's, it's, and from my point of view, you know, having done this for 27 years now, it's just amazing to me that nobody knows this and that more people don't do it. I mean, it's kind of like we're... We're going around saying, hey, everybody, the earth is round. You know, it's not flat. And it makes a big difference when you figure that out. But but it, it's, I guess we're just at the kind of the tip of the spear here of the educational curve. Um, really, though, Mark, it's people like you, no kidding, uh, who are open-minded enough, um, smart enough to take us to, to listen to what we have to say and then to even apply it. And, you know, if there were more people in the world like you, there would be a lot less suffering. So um, I really applaud um, your kind of stepping outside of the comfort zone into the undiscovered country of science-based, clinically verified medical nutrition. Keep up the good work. I appreciate your support more than you know. Ladies and gentlemen, I am your steadfast advocate for health. If you like what you're hearing on the show, go to the website. You're going to love that. Glidden.healthcare. Stick around. If you are sick and tired of feeling sick and tired, if you are finally finished with expensive and ineffective MD treatments, and if you are frustrated with not knowing which nutritional supplements to take, you have come to exactly the right place. 
we are here to help. Log into eiffelhelp.com, click the contact button, and someone who has been working with Dr. Glidden will contact you and show you exactly what to do to recover your health. Go to eiffelhelp.com, that's eiffelhelp.com, and click the contact button now. We're back, ladies and gentlemen, finishing out today's show by answering questions in the chat room. If you would like to get into the chat room where you can also watch a live video stream of this show, how about that? Become a Dr. Glidden advocate at glidden.healthcare. Become a Dr. Glidden advocate at glidden.healthcare. Enter the chat room, enter the educational matrix, and figure out what to do to enter the game of healing. Science-based, clinically verified medical nutrition uh, um, there, Bobby in the chat room says, Doc, uh, f- I have back pain. I had an x-ray. Uh, the, the doctors are telling me that the source of my back pain is from two degenerated discs in my back. I know that this can be fixed. What can I do to fix it? Well, first things first, Bobby, just because you have degenerative discs in your back doesn't mean that that's what causes the pain. There are uh, thousands of people who have degenerative discs in their back and no pain. Thousands of people who have degenerative discs in their back and they don't have pain, right? So it's possible that your pain is caused by the degenerative disc. It's also possible that it's got nothing to do with it. But in any event, a degenerative disc is a sign of an imbalance in the body, a sign that the game is afoot and we need to pay attention to that. So how do we fix that? Well, by giving the body the raw materials that the discs are made out of. So in this regard, it would be um, glucogel sufficient to the cause, extra plant-derived minerals, and extra liquid calcium. So glucogel sufficient to the cause. It's one capsule per 10 pounds per day. So if you're 210 pounds, you need 21 glucogel a day, seven with breakfast, seven with lunch, seven with dinner, bada bing, bada boom. I would take one extra bottle of plant-derived minerals a month. I would do one bottle of plant-derived minerals per 100 pounds per month, and then I would do one extra bottle of plant-derived minerals a month. I would also do one extra bottle of the liquid calcium a month. Now, interestingly enough, the blood supply to the intervertebral discs is not the greatest in the world. So intervertebral discs take a long time to heal. Ostensibly, you can accelerate that by getting a heating pad (coughs) and lying on it I don't know, five, ten minutes, twice a day, um, and put the heating pad right over the area of your back where the discs are degenerated, right? Now, if you really want to go for the moon here, um, you can get a heating pad, and then right next to it, you can get a bag of ice. And so you're two minutes on the heating pad, two minutes on the ice, two minutes on the heating pad, two minutes on the ice, two minutes on the heating pad, two minutes on the ice, while you are doing lymphatic breathing. Two minutes on the heating pad, two minutes on the ice while you're doing the lymphatic breathing. Start with the hot, end with the cold. Do that for 15 minutes twice a day, once a day if you can't do it twice a day. That little exercise right there will increase your circulation uh, and ostensibly help the delivery of these nutrients to speed up. But that's what I would do. Additionally, of course, the Good Herbs product would be uh, bone and tissue support. A half a teaspoon three times a day of the good herbs, bone, and tissue support. And it might be worth your while to take the tissue support immediately before you do the hot and cold thing, right? Take the tissue support immediately before you do the hot and cold program. Howard King is up next. Howard says, Doc, I have a friend with PTSD, post-traumatic stress syndrome. What do I do to fix this? This is a very interesting phenomenon. We give all 90 essential nutrients plus extra plant minerals. All 90 essential nutrients, extra plant minerals, and extra EFAs. So, one healthy body start pack 2.0 liquid per 100 pounds of body weight per month. One bottle of plant minerals per 100 pounds of body weight per month. And once you've got that dialed in, I would give two extra bottles of minerals and two extra bottles of Ultimate EFA. Two extra bottles of minerals and two extra bottles of Ultimate EFA per month. I would also give the Good Herbs Hypothalamus support. Good Herbs Hypothalamus support. Have 
the PTSD person do that for four months. For four months, eliminate the 12 bad foods. And then if there's anything lingering there, have them schedule an appointment with a classical homeopath because homeopathy can really go a long way towards kicking this out once the body has been neutrified. And of course, whenever there's the central nervous system dysfunction, we recommend a diet high in cholesterol because that's what your brain and nerves are made from. How about that? Ladies and gentlemen, we're out of time. Thanks for your time. I am your steadfast advocate for health. Until we meet again, live long and prosper.